So I was invited to talk today as part of New York Scotland, um, which is one sort of already covered it. So what I thought I'd share today is sort of one of the biggest experiences that I had in 2011 sort of part of New York Scotland. Uh, and this is like my own personal experience of effective forecasting and learning sort of the impact on my feelings of like expectation and what that might mean kind of both life and in art. So, because New York Scotland is like an open call application situation, I guess you assume that like people who apply, they do so with like some kind of feeling that if they're successful, then they'll gain some kind of positive feeling or like some kind of reward, and then if they aren't successful, then maybe they'll sort of feel some kind of absence uh, of that positivity. And I guess I felt that because for a long time, like, I was quite bad at disappointment management, and I never really knew like how to deal with it. And, um, but I was lucky because last year was my first sort of experience of being on the side of success. Uh, but the reason I'm talking about effective forecasting is because the day that I got an email from Collective saying that I'd been successful in my application, I also got an email like almost within minutes of each other from this boy that I was seeing at the time, sort of saying that he didn't ever really want to see me again. So like, yeah, there was like so yeah, effective forecasting is like a positive psychology term that sort of implies that in the present, you can't really predict how you're going to properly feel in the future, even if you think something's going to happen and make you happy. There'll always be these kind of smaller things that impact on that experience. Um, and because of that personal life experience, I sort of started to think about expectation, what the relationship of that was like in how people produce art and like their hopes of forming a career or making themselves happy. And I had two problems with it. One of them was like, this idea that you get into your head of like becoming an artist and how like if you become an artist that will make you happy but for me anyway like it might not be a shared experience but I always felt like there was this need to like validate this idea of whether I was an artist like if I saw it written somewhere then I felt like oh yeah I'm actually an artist but because of the like because of this capacity to get accustomed to things like I feel like you know seeing it once isn't enough and eventually you have to keep on seeing it more and more so it just becomes this relentless cycle of like needing to be told like yeah you're an artist. Um, the other the main worry for me though was really like this idea of like if people really want to become an artist perhaps they have ideas of like how to tailor their work or their ideas to like please validating bodies or and like maybe they've pre-imagined certain standards that might like lead them to success perhaps and so like perhaps they end up making more familiar works and this is where we see works that kind of repeat themselves or seem like replicas of other works. Uh, and I feel like I was sort of suffering from that because I've been in situations where people have said to me like, oh well we really like your work but like it's difficult to show it in a gallery because I don't know whether people would really take it seriously and so I felt like I was sort of paying the price for people trying to stick to a standard or like uh, play up to other people's tastes. And so today I really wanted to offer like a message of hope for other people that might feel in a similar situation. Uh, normally as an artist I think a lot about production but Today I'm thinking about reception, and this is because like for a while I had this kind of reception neurosis, we might say, which has come through like a male pattern balding anxiety, where I was always thinking like, oh god, like what I'm going to do when this becomes a massive problem, like you know, it was there. Like art wise, I'm quite lucky because I'm a member of Artists Anonymous, which is a therapy group that meets at CCA once every three weeks with other artists and we talk through issues. And also I'm a studio member at Iron Rats, which is like a super supportive environment to be in. Uh, so art-wise, yeah, I've got like lots of support networks, but like hair-wise, I really felt like I didn't know who to talk to about this because it felt a bit tedious and embarrassing. Uh, and maybe that's the situation now. But I was so worried about falling into this kind of unacceptable category or this situation where like I was like in an undesirable aesthetic position. I'm gonna read this bit properly because I really think like uh, it's important. So like one of the reasons I couldn't really acclimatise myself to this situation was because I felt like I was actually judging myself by standards that I'd imagine that other people might have. And really like the biggest part of the battle for me with that was kind of coming to terms with the idea that other people's standards don't necessarily have to matter or they're not the right standards. I feel like I spend a lot of time worrying about maybe everyone else is really free and no one else feels it. But um, yeah, I really worry about it. So like Especially in art, you know, if you're kind of trying to progress your career, like maybe you're trying to like please people or do something that people will like, I feel like it can be yeah, a bit of a worry. There's this joke that my flatmate told me, well, 
it's actually a life situation, it's like a real situation, but it should be a joke. She was saying like, when she first came to Glasgow, she was talking to someone, um, and I'm not going to mention their name, but they're quite a well-respected art writer in London, and this woman said to my flatmate, oh, you're moving to Glasgow, what are you going to do, like, start making really slick minimalist sculptures or kind of old grain videos? And so, like, the worry in that is that, like, for me, it seems like there's already kind of standards that people have in mind of how to be like a successful artist perhaps like in a kind of Glasgow environment where it's really like what I would say is it's time to be a little bit more grown up about things and actually think that these standards <coughs> they're only standards because people kept doing them for such a long time that everybody got accustomed to them and became used to it and so actually as younger artists I suppose like what we have to do is realise that if we keep doing what we're doing like eventually the same thing will happen through exposure, you know, like, people will come to terms with it and it'll be okay. And if they don't get used to it, then, like, we have to get used to that and, like, that's maybe cool as well, like, because the other option, I mean, looking at male pattern boarding, like, I was looking at Wayne Rooney and I was thinking, like, what a waste, because there's so many young people that look at, well, I don't know, there's so many people that look at Wayne Rooney, but I'm sure some people look at him and I think, like, what kind of message are you sending by getting a hair transplant to all these other people that are maybe in your situation but don't have your finance? Or like, I was in bed with this guy once and in the morning every time he tried to sit up in the bed I was kind of trying to sit up further so he wouldn't look down on the top of my head and see that I was balding. And I don't really want to be in that situation because well, it's, it's like it's not reality. So, um, yeah, I think it takes a long time to accept that you just like things like, yeah, you get used to them through, like, a process of rationalisation. And so I decided, like, to kind of celebrate the fact that actually the human brain will always, like, take bad situations and eventually, like, level them out a little bit so that you can begin to see positives in them. And I thought I'd try and apply that to career frustrations and to making things as maybe an artist that you feel like people aren't instantaneously comfortable with. And so the sentence that came out of this is, you'll get used to it. And so tonight I'm going to present a new project that was made cooperatively with Dave Bain, Hugh Ditchman, Tom Godfrey, Neil Maguire, Matthew Parkin and Richard Taylor and they're all going through or have gone through the male boarding process as well. And so what we've done together is the first thing <laughs> is uh, Collective asked me to design a new t-shirt for their shop. And so this, uh, I haven't seen anything that's been made um, for this project, yeah, so this is the first unveiling, like, this is the new t-shirt that was made, you're going to watch me all get used to it, like, um, oh, look, really, a little bit tight, maybe, but, like, so anyway, this is the t-shirt, I think, oh, yeah, nice, like, anyway, it's a celebration of Borden, and, um, secondly, what we did was, um, I had discussions with each of the people that contributed a little bit, but then I just said, look, don't tell me any more about it, it's really important that like, I learn this capacity to get used to it. So, um, the, the website, which was designed by Neil McGuire, hosts three films that were directed by Tom Godfrey, Neil Parkin, and Richard Taylor, and they're all written uh, from, or their performances and scripts written by Hugh Ditchman, uh, that again, sort of, I had a hand in, but I haven't really well, I haven't seen at all. We're going to watch some more together right now. Uh, we're going to watch the first one now, and then we're going to watch the second one a bit later, and then the third one a little bit later, so that you don't get bored of it all. Um, the reason I'm doing this as well, I don't know if this is a shared fear, but for a long time I was really bad at like choosing videos where my friends asked me, like, what are we going to watch tonight? And like, also showing video where that is associated with in a room full of people, because, yeah, I could never relax and enjoy it, because I was always thinking, like, oh my god, I wonder if everyone else is enjoying this. But tonight, I guess I'm just not going to care, like, if, if you hate it, then I can't think much about it. Well, I can switch off, but this is the website, I've never seen it before. Um, I guess we'll just watch this one first, and I'm going to sit here on this chair with this spotlight, and uh, everyone can sort of check out my bald spot at the same time, just to really, yeah, get used to it. Shots. 